Welcome back. In keeping with our theme of Women's History Month and Women Who Amaze Me by Doing Amazing Things and Growing and Constantly Looking for Their Next Best Self, our next guest qualifies with fireworks. Claudia Sawaf has had a big history in uh, hospitality. She has worked and lived around the world. She has made her residence in Southern California. And now she is working with Mission Wealth. And Mission Wealth was founded on a vision to empower families to pursue their financial dreams. That vision has grown and evolved to be a mission that inspires people to optimize their finances and achieve their life goals. And Claudia has always been the one who has jumped in to help people understand how they can make more and make the most of everything they have. And with more women than ever before in history now taking charge of our finances, being heads of household, being responsible to grow our own wealth and take financial control of our futures, which we may not feel like we have the tools to do that, at least not a complete toolbox. In many cases, for the first time, Mission Wealth has its own initiatives to focus on women, for women, by women. And Claudia is here to share tips and tools with us that I know are going to help us feel more confident with greater clarity around our future. Claudia, thank you for coming to talk about a topic that is generally, it's hard for us, right? Why? Yeah, and, and let me say, Lauren, it is such a privilege to be here with you and to tackle this really important topic because let's face it, women in this country alone, we oversee 10 trillion in assets. So to your point, do we sometimes realize this, that we are now heads of households and that we manage wealth and we make financial decisions on behalf of our families? And I think we need to almost take a moment to let that sink in. And when we fast forward to 2030, we may very well oversee about 30 trillion in assets. And that's huge. And that means we need advice and we need good advice. That is it's actually our own country and not even a small country. It's a, yep. size, a sizable country that we oversee. And in terms of family and uh, management, it's not always a traditional family. I mean, we who are running households may be single households. It may be divorced households, retired households, entire young and growing families, yeah. In my case, I, I worry for my parents who I want them to live forever. So outliving their money is a is a true reality mm -hmm. that I wasn't planning for when I set out in my career. That's just the, the reality that we're facing, Lauren, that it's not just the wealth we now oversee. It, it is those daily financial decisions we are faced with. And this is why... I've always made it my personal mission to support female clients and really females in general in their careers, in their early careers, in their late stages. And when you then look at the amount of financial decisions we're making, not just on our behalf, but for our children, as you mentioned, Lauren, for our parents. And, and then we come to that realization, okay, I really do need to feel empowered to make very solid and good decisions that I can also stand by and feel good about. Because as you know, it's one thing to make a decision, but then we've all been there where we then wake up the next morning and we're like, I don't know, was, was that a good decision? Did I, did I do the right thing? And I know, you wake up like, oh no, what did I do? It, exactly, right? And, and then you put money into the equation. Money is charged with emotions. Sometimes not the best of emotions, sometimes there's fear, right? And, and so my philosophy has always been to, to instill an abundance thinking and, and start taking the fear out of money. And how do we do that? We do that by making solid decisions, but that also means, and Lauren, I'm, I'm so blessed to work with a lot of female clients. And this is something that is very supported in our firm. And when working with female clients, 
in my experience, and I'm not generalizing, of course, but a female client is looking for a relationship, is looking for having a member on her team where, you know, we go through the joyful times and we celebrate the successes, but we also have to be there to help her through challenges and through major life transitions. You know, clients in general come to us when there are major life tra tra transitions. <laughs> That's a tough word. <laughs> and so you, you talk about going into retirement, selling a business, being independent in general, right? A lot of independent women come to us. And when you go through these life transitions, it's not always easy to make solid decisions. And then you're looking for someone to be there for you, to be on your team. And if it's one message I'd like to get across here to any female that is now in a position of wanting to feel more empowered is hire the right person to be on your team. And, and luckily, there are now many, many more female advisors. When I started out, that was not at all the case. I think Barron's has it at about 15 to 20% is now are now female advisors in the industry. And I'm, I'm so pleased to share with you, Lauren, that at our firm, uh, we come in at 37%. And 55% of our females are actually in leadership positions. And, and that really creates a culture for all of us to thrive. And then we are in turn able to bring this forward to our female client community. Well, and I believe, I do believe that, you know, our questions are different necessarily than, you know, the questions that a man would ask yeah. or, or even that another woman would ask in a different situation. What are some of the most common questions that you receive? That's it's and, and you bring up such a valid point because the fact of the matter is female brains work very differently than the male brains, right? And I, I, that's research substantiated. We don't we don't even have to talk about this anymore. So therefore, you can just imagine, right, when managing wealth, of course the, the female brain works differently and, and potentially has different questions. So the good news is with our female brain, we tend to actually make better investors. <laughs> and why is that? Because we tend to, once we make a decision, the decision is a solid one. And we, we also weigh risk a little bit more prudently, I'm going to say. You probably heard this phenomenon with, with, with investing, right? It's either fear or greed. Right. And this sometimes drives all the wrong decisions. And what I find for women, they ask all the right questions to not let either one of these emotions get the better part of them. And so then when we start investing, we go in it for the long run and we tend to have better long-term results in, in wealth accumulation. So the questions are very thoughtful. They're not just, Lauren, tell me how much I can make with this stock right now and do, am I gonna hit the home run? The question is, um, Claudia, can I support the goal of getting my child through a four-year out-of-state, potentially private college? Lauren, can I structure my investments in such a way so that when my parents may need assistance, that I have a bucket of money that I can use to support them? So the questions are much more driven and the, the objectives are more driven by the greater good. There's more talk about philanthropy, there's more talk about giving back. So what I find, it's not just about her, it's also about how she can support the, the greater good of everyone around her. Well, and I think that is generally a woman's approach, feeling responsible, even, even in my business, I, I never had um, the same questions come from the women and the men, but do you find that age matters? Like if we're starting out later or if we're starting out earlier, is it mm -hmm. still possible to achieve our goals no matter when we start? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that, Lauren, because I think sometimes we feel at any age, right? Young people are like, oh, I'm too young and this is too early. And then we come to the middle of the road and then it's like, oh, I should have done this. And you know, as Tony Robbins says, don't, don't shoot all over yourself ever. And the time is always now. So to answer your question, it's never too late. 
the time is always now. And then what we do is we assess the entire financial situation. And sometimes we are able to give the peace of mind and the, the clarity and the confirmation that you know, you're in good shape. Because I can also say, Lauren, sometimes women come to us thinking they're behind. And then once we look into the entire financial situation, the balance sheet, we create very customized um, financial strategies. And it's so interesting. Many times we go back and we say, you know, you're actually in a very good position and you can make work an option in five years from now. So sometimes it's just a validation that things are in, in good order. And, and really the, this, the anxiety and nervousness always comes from not knowing. So my goal has always been to provide clarity. And, and you can do that with taking all the data and creating a solid financial strategy. And you know, if she thinks she's behind, then there are ways you can change course and, and, and put her on the right path. And I think the most important thing is the, the part that you brought up earlier about having a partner in the process. It's yeah. It's, it's like any member of your personal support team. You mm -hmm. need your doctors, you need your accountants, you need your financial advisors, the people who can help you through the times that are stressful because for, as you pointed out, money always comes with emotion. And somehow, at least I know in my experience, listening to men describe and talk about money and advise me on how to work with my money, I always felt overly emotional because they were always overly detached and they were just very logical. And that was, that was fine. And sometimes I could see in their eyes, they could not understand why I was having such a struggle. And, and I do believe that over time, now that more women have entered the financial services advisory, not just in the financial services world, but into the advisory capacity and bring that similar experience and a deep level of understanding. It's a joy to know that both a couple or an individual can actually put together a team of multi-brained approaches and yeah. A woman, even bringing a woman advisor and a male advisor, a female and a male advisor to complement your team, I think could be a great advantage too. Um, at Mission Wealth, I know you have your initiative, Women on a Mission, which I love. And <laughs> so tell us, how is that How is that actually driving things forward for women? So one thing, Women on a Mission is a beautiful initiative whereby we create not only from an internal, you know, when, when I spoke to you about 37% of us are female advisors and 55% are in leadership, it takes a certain culture to support female advisors and support any female in an organization. And we create this supportive culture, very inclusive culture. And through women on a mission internally, we meet once a month we create other infinity groups where if a topic resonates our advisors not just female advisors male adv advisors can join these affinity groups but through women on a mission specifically we ensure that our own team members and mission wealth family members have ways to have this path forward with happiness and financial well-being and overall holistic well-being now, you take that women on a mission internally and you take it to the outside of Mission Wealth world, right? We essentially constantly brainstorm ways. How can we improve the services offered to our female clients? And then we bring our female clients into the fold. Um, personally, I've been part of a women and wealth initiative since 2014, and that with a larger national firm and, and we talk to other female advisors across the country to enhance services to our female clients. And so you, you couple the internal initiative to make sure that everyone inside the firm is well taken care of and, and feels appreciated, valued, and has ways to grow, right? And then we take this to the outside world and we now find ways how we can always enhance 
the, the lives and the well-being and the services to our female clients. I, I think it's an amazing and wonderful approach because be, it, for each of us being happy on the inside, it makes us more available to be happy on the outside and share that. And so, Claudia, where can our viewers learn more about Mission Wealth? You, our viewers can learn more about us by going to our website, missionwealth.com. What you will see is a beautiful blue lotus flower, which is our logo. And I love that, which if, if many of you know, the lotus flower stands for transformation. It's a very positive symbol. And the blue lotus is actually a symbol for abundance. So when you see that blue logo on Mission Wealth, missionwealth.com, you can also find us on LinkedIn. And on LinkedIn, we also have a page dedicated to women on a mission. So I encourage all of your viewers to come join us over on LinkedIn on a women on a mission group where we post relevant articles and we share education. And Lauren, speaking of education, I just want to mention one additional thing, and, and that is a tip and, and really that's dear to my heart. And that is for women to feel okay to ask questions. The Financial industry has not always done a very good job, as you had mentioned your example, to really educate, um, not just female clients, but really any client. And, and I think to feel really empowered and comfortable with your own wealth, with your own finances, it's our mission at our firm to always provide education. So you don't feel you're just taking that prescription from your physician and you do not know why, right? So, just, to, just like we empower patients to ask good questions, please do so when it is about your money, about your wealth and your goals. I absolutely that agree. Will help you sleep better at night as well. And it's all about sleeping better at night. Claudia, oh, so much for us today. I'm so grateful to have you and an uh, amazing woman doing amazing work. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Lauren, so much for having me. It's been a true gift. We'll be right back.